Amsterdam, the Netherlands' captivating metropolis. A city of canals and gabled houses, where anything is allowed as long as it does no harm. 7,000 protected gabled houses, numerous canals that are known as grachten, cyclists, tulips and atmospheric bars. Directly behind the railway station is the harbour, whose ferry boats are busy night and day. It was from here that trading and warships once set out to sea. The splendid main station was built in neo-Gothic style on three artificial islands. To achieve this, 8,687 stakes were sunk 12 meters deep into the harbor. In 1567, the much-traveled Italian Lodovico Giuciardini referred to Amsterdam as the Venice of the North. Today, the view across the main square and royal castle gives little hint that the lake is supported by stakes and that Amsterdam is the largest lakeland village in the world. The bicycle is one of the main features of this city. Parking spaces have been designed specially for this mode of transport, showing that even in a large city, there is an alternative way of getting about. Life here has always been determined by water. 165 Grachten, at a total length of 75 kilometers, still cross the center of the city. The city was founded at the end of the 13th century, at the mouth of the Amstel on the Zuider Zee. Here, land and sea are united. The watermark in the canals must be constantly maintained since the city is beneath sea level. On the banks grow trees that offer shade and even the trams cross the Grachten across various bridges. And throughout the year the city enjoys a temperate climate. In the centre, there are nearly 7,000 protected houses and warehouses. Most of them date back to the 18th and 19th centuries, and some are even older. The 300-year-old Magerobruch is of wood construction and is one of the most beautiful drawbridges in the world. Even today, it's operated manually and, when raised, permits ships to pass below. Legend has it that it was built for two sisters who lived on one side of the Amstel and who kept their carriage and horses on the other. Nature cleans the water within the canals with both high and low tides. trip by boat through the Grachten begins at Central Station. This is a real adventure 
and an absolute must on any visit to Amsterdam as the views are particularly good. The crossing of the waterways is well regulated with one-way traffic and lights. The Grachten are set in a semicircular belt around Amsterdam and once served as both the border of the city and also as its trading routes. Today they are an efficient route for getting around. At the end of the old town we travel past the fortified tower of Montelbahn Storen that has been disguised as a church tower and now we have returned to our starting point. To gain an understanding of the size of this former sea power it's a good idea to visit the Netherlands Scapefart Museum, the second largest maritime museum in the world. Here the glorious history of both Amsterdam and the Netherlands is well documented with a large collection of sea maps, paintings and ships. The East India Company is also featured and one of its past trading ships, the Amsterdam, can be explored in detail. The ship is a replica of the original Amsterdam that sank during a storm on its maiden voyage in 1749 just off the English coast. The three-mast ship provides a good insight of life on board these 42-meter vessels of bygone times. They brought much prosperity to the city. The bunks were incredibly small, but the dining area and living quarters of the captain and officers were relatively spacious. The East India Trading Company was founded in 1602 by Dutch traders in order to secure valuable products from Southeast Asia spices, tea, rubber and ceramics. The Blumenmarkt has been in existence since the 17th century. In bygone days, fresh flowers were delivered by boat and sold on board. Here, a great variety of colourful tulips and bulbs is offered for sale, as well as many exotic plants and seeds. At the end of each market day, various traders attempt to sell their products at knock-down prices. The Amsterdam History Museum was once a monastic orphanage. Its numerous divided inner courtyards were used to separate the boys from the girls. This building contains the city's most attractive and architecturally unique museum and it features carved wooden figures and rare old books. The museum's exhibits extend over 24 rooms and provide many interesting impressions of life in the Amsterdam of old.
Particularly impressive is the large collection of paintings by Rembrandt and his contemporaries that depict historical events as well as numerous impressions of everyday life. Amsterdam is Europe's capital of tolerance, as is evidenced by its many religions and churches. The largest church in Jordan, once a district of the poor, is the Norderkirk. Situated close to the Prinsengracht, it was the religious meeting place of the Orthodox Calvinists of the Reformed Parish. The building's ground plan is that of a Greek cross. New church is almost 600 years old, but due to its lack of worshippers, it's now used as a venue for exhibitions and concerts, and these fund its continued maintenance. Built in around 1300 AD, Old Church is the oldest religious building in the city, Gothic church built on Roman foundations. During the Middle Ages, the church served as a refuge for vagrants. Today, it's surrounded by a seedy sex and entertainment district. With its 85-metre-high tower that contains a replica of the imperial crown of Maximilian II, the Vesterkirk is located on the Prinzengracht and is one of the city's main landmarks. The impressive brick facade of the Rijksmuseum in the single Gracht is another city landmark. It was here that the Princes of Orange began their art collection. The museum was inaugurated in 1885 and contains more than 5,000 paintings, such as Rembrandt's Night Watchman and Vermeer's Kitchen Maiden. This splendid building was designed by the master builder Kuipers and was built at the command of King Wilhelm. It's encircled by a small park and fountains. In 1682, city fathers decided to create a leisure area in the east of the city, in the centre of which the artist's zoo was subsequently established. It's the oldest zoo on the European continent and was founded in 1838. And even today, it still possesses its own special kind of magic. Today, the artist's zoo houses around 8,000 animals that appear to fully appreciate their well-thought-out enclosures. As the city developed and due to lack of space, houses were built close to the zoo. Thus, their inhabitants are able to observe herds of buffalo from the comfort of their living rooms. Penguins are on full display. The llamas are bemused by the many onlookers and bears lie idly in the heat of the day and wait for the next feed.
the gorillas conjure up further mischief. Close to Amsterdam is the city of Haarlem that boasts a well-preserved medieval city centre. Trade including the manufacture of linen and the cultivation of flowers has brought much prosperity to the city. The Grote Markt was once used for various competitions before it became a market square and it's still used several times a week to the delight of its many visitors. With its 80 meter high tower, St. Baverkirk, also known as the Big Church, dominates each of the other buildings in the market square. The houses are extremely attractive and well maintained and are reminiscent of a bygone time. As with Amsterdam, Haarlem also developed in the 17th century. Traders settled on the canals and anchored their boats outside their dwellings. In the 12th century, Haarlem was the seat of the Dutch Counts and in 1245 was officially designated as a city. It's thought that the finest Dutch beer was once brewed here. Today's tranquil canal landscape makes it difficult to believe that once the women here offered fierce resistance against Spanish Habsburg rule. However, in 1573, the Spanish invaders succeeded in capturing the city. A regiment of 300 women were overcome in spite of their incredible fighting spirit. Today, jumbo jets take off from the runway of Schiphol Airport to destinations around the world. But it was once covered by the Harlem Sea, an inland waterway that flooded this area. The impossible dream eventually turned to reality. Dams were constructed and water was drained out in order to reclaim the land for everyday use. The drainage work at Crookius near Amsterdam was one of the most important factors that allowed the miracle to happen between 1849 and 1853. The once largest steam engine in the world is today only a museum exhibit and in 1992 was duly protected as a technical wonder. Its huge boilers and excavating machinery were built in 1848 by Harvey and Company in England, delivered by ship and reassembled here. Resembling a huge octopus, this monster machine noisily removed no less than 60,000 litres of water with each movement of its scoop. Each decade, 
A unique exhibition takes place here. The Floriade. This is the largest garden exhibition in the world and covers a huge area above the Haarlemmer Sea. Colourful tulip fields and well-designed gardens are on display and various international artists show off their creative skills. The entire world of flora is presented here and several varieties of tulips dominate the splendid show whose colours and aromas captivate the senses. The Floriade is a magnificent display of flowers, plants, trees, bushes and fruit. A paradise that covers 65 hectares. Various other countries are also represented. From Europe to Asia, culture and nature are here for all to see. A real natural adventure. Southwest of Amsterdam is the Kirkenhof. This features the national flower of the Netherlands, the tulip. Millions of visitors come here when the tulips are in full blossom. In the 17th century, the tulip that originally came from Turkey was a symbol of the rich. The Leidener gardener, Johann van Hogeland, began to cultivate them. He managed to cultivate various colours and shapes, and soon they fetched large amounts of money. They became a commercial gem. But eventually the market crashed. The tulip industry had grown too quickly for its own good. During the summer months, the people of Amsterdam travel 25 kilometers to the most popular bathing place in the Netherlands, Zandvoort, on the North Sea coast. The area's old renovated hotels are proof of its popularity as a holiday resort, and around 1.5 million visitors come here each year. Private villas also feature in this coastal resort. A summer residence in this region is almost a necessity for the overworked citizens of Amsterdam. Sometimes the moist winds from the North Sea blows into the most hidden corners of the many restaurants that lie directly on the large beach, Amsterdam's Riviera. The metropolis of Amsterdam possesses an inescapable charm, especially if you sit in one of its many cafes or spot one of the many contorted houses beside the Grachten. Because it possesses the largest historical city centre in Europe, it's like a living open-air museum. Both aged hippies and trended teenagers adore this fascinating city, Amsterdam. Europe's irresistible capital of cool. <laughs> 